okay, we're going to go ahead and try to help you with a few of these Delta Math problems. Um, just uh, one thing I would encourage you to do is maybe consider uh, sketching some of these diagrams out on your paper or some of these that don't have a diagram, especially it's very important you draw the diagram. But on this one, you have H, J, K. Now, the way they name an angle is the one in the middle is the vertex. So that's basically starting at H, then to J, then to K, and that draws your angle, kind of looks like a pair of tweezers. And it tells you, so your small part of the angle there is going to be 36. So we're going to put a 36 in for the actual angle. That's the little end of the tweezer. So if that's 36, remember that the central angle actually matches the arc. So if the angle is in the middle, they match. So if that's 36, this is 36. And that's how you do a problem like that. Let's go ahead and try another one. Okay, so once again, when they name the angle JML, it starts at J goes to M, then to L. So this is an inscribed angle that's on the edge of the circle, and it tells you that in this case the arc is 48, and it wants to know this angle up here. Well, since this is inscribed, the last one was a central angle, an angle in the middle. Uh, this one, since it's inscribed, it's half the size, so that's 24. So pay attention to whether they give you an angle in the middle. If they would have given you this angle, for example, that angle in the middle would have been 48 as well. But since they give you the inscribed one over there, it's half the arc, which is 24. Let's try another one. Okay, this one again, mark your angle. It starts at S, then V, then U. So we're talking about that inscribed angle there. It tells you that this is 56 degrees. And it wants to know the measure of the arc that goes from S to U. Well, since this is an inscribed angle, it's half the arc. So if this is 56, and it's half of SU, that means I can do 56 times two to get SU. That has to be bigger for an inscribed angle. They match for centrals, bigger for inscribed. So that's gonna be 112 when I multiply that by two. So pay attention to what they're giving you, whether they're giving you an angle or an arc. Pay attention to whether it's a central angle or an inscribed angle, and that'll help you out a lot on these. Let's go ahead and try another type. Okay, let's mark the angle it's telling us. So it's talking about SV, U, so start at S, then go to V, then go to U, and they're saying that angle there is 30 degrees. So this angle here is 30 degrees. And then the angle they're asking us about is STU. STU. So um, this is a good problem because I have to take this 30 degrees, and since this is an inscribed angle in green there, this arc over here, this 30 degrees has to be half of this arc. So if this is 30, this is 60. That holds true for an inscribed angle. Now, since this is a central angle, if this is 60 degrees, this angle at T, which is what it was looking for, is also 60 degrees. So notice how I used an angle to get an arc, and I used an arc to get another angle. That's um, very important in geometry problems. A lot of times you have to use what they've given you to get something else and then use that to get what you actually want. So we'll try another example. Okay, so mark what they give you. They have C, F, E. So they're talking starting at C, going to F, going to E. This here is 45 degrees. And what they're asking for is C, D, E, which is this angle in the middle. So if this is 45 degrees, to get that, I'm going to need to get the arc first. So remember, 45 is the inscribed angle. The inscribed angle should be half of this arc. So if that's 45, this has to be twice that, which is 90. And then this arc matches the central angle. So 90 will match 90, and it's a 90 degree. So once again, pay attention to what kind of angle you're dealing with, central or inscribed, and uh, work through it, marking what you need a step at a time. We might try one more. 